Can you tell us what is the difference between a Federal Reserve official saying financial conditions are tight and people on Wall Street still saying they're easy? Well, I think they're right where they need to be. Uh, you know, uh, if you point to the equity market or the credit spreads, uh, yeah, the, it feels like uh, c conditions are easy. But if you look at bank lending standards and uh, the banking system in general, not so much. Uh, you know, uh, credit is uh, much uh, tougher to come by. Uh, so the, the value of the dollar is strong. That is, that's consistent with tight financial conditions. So if you add it all up and, you know, mix it up in a pot, feels like financial conditions are right where they need to be. So, yeah, you can find things that show that they're easy, some things that show that they're that they're tight, but all in, you know, it feels like, again, the Fed's got, it, got financial conditions exactly where they want them. At this point, though, Mark, how much is this boiling the frog? And this has been sort of one of the questions with the long and variable lags that, you know, we're sort of doing damage under the hood that's suddenly going to come to the fore. And that was the belief earlier this year. It was a belief last year. And then people abandoned that, said actually things are just fine and we can live with rates right here. Do you have a sense of which it is, of where the balance of risks is in terms of holding conditions at this level for just a longer period of time? Yeah, well, you know, the most likely scenario is the Fed's going to pull this off and the economy's going to soft land and they'll start cutting rates here pretty soon and, you know, things will settle in. But I, I do worry that they're holding on here too long, uh, that that's uh, too high for too long. Uh, you know, uh, the, the labor market has signs of weakness. I, I went through a, a litany of those. Uh, the financial system is is fragile, it feels to me. I mean, the yield curve is inverted. You know, short-term rates are still above long-term rates. That's not, you know, consistent with a well-functioning financial system. That, you know, it's a very uncomfortable position to be in for the system. So, the, you know, I, I've got this image in my mind of the system of, uh, as an engine, and it's shaking tremendously under the stress of these higher rates. And so far, you know, it's held together with a little bit of uh, duct tape and some help from the Federal Reserve and, you know, banking regulators. But for how long and 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 and, and why we, why would you do this i mean I, I think mission accomplished i mean full employment 4% unemployment rate inflation's back at target properly measured and has been for a long time so why take the risk uh, so yeah i do worry about that scenario I, I don't think it's off the table and i don't think we can take it off the table until the fed starts lowering interest rates you wrote about it in the washington post note to fed it's okay to cut interest rates now sort of goes against, Mark, what we heard from Bill Dudley, who said the Fed thinks it's fighting inflation. Think again. How would you convince the Kashkaris of this world this week in a two-day meeting starting tomorrow? What would be the sort of cheat guide you'd say, you're wrong, this is the way I see the world? Well, there's nothing that's going to convince anybody except data. So we get that CPI report. You know, the consensus is that the core CPI comes in at 0.3. I mean, 0.25, I think, to the second significant digit. And you need, a, you know, you need some 0.2s and 0.25s here over the next couple, three months. And I think then you'll make believers out of uh, folks on the Fed that they can they can cut rates. By the way, 0.25, you annualize that, that's just about 3%, a little bit over 3. That's on the CPI. You, you know, make adjustments because the it, uh, the consumer expenditure deflator is constructed differently. You're you're pretty close. To, you're within spinning distance of target. And, and by the way, we're still, you know, I, I get it. We're slavishly holding this 2% target on the uh, PCE deflator. I, I, you know, I, I understand the necessity, necessity to do that under, uh, because of the, the credibility and everything else. But really, at the end of the day, I mean, is 2% the right number? I think most people would say no, it's probably higher than that. So why sacrifice the economy to the altar of a 2% inflation target if you don't need to?